the reality of phantoms and monsters. They exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey folks, good evening. And welcome to Phantoms and Monsters Personal Reports, where I narrate and discuss some of the cryptid and unexplained sightings and encounters submitted to Phantoms and Monsters and the Phantoms and Monsters 14 research team. Thanks for joining me. So uh, Phantoms and Monsters radio channel was made possible by you clicking the subscribe button and by you sharing our programming. Uh, super chat, super thank donation are always appreciated. And the uh, Buy Me a Link coffee is also on the page. So uh, thanks for your consideration. Now, if you're in the chat and have a question, please use caps. I'll try to get to each one of them after our presentation. <clears throat> and I suspect there's going to be some questions tonight because I'm kind of going in to the very beginning. Well, let's put it this way. I, I Not the beginning of the actual uh, Chicago Mothman flap. It's, uh, we're talking about 2017 when the, I call the emergence started after what we had in 2011. Now, uh, what happened was, um, in, in April, 2017, one of the, uh, largest cryptid sagas started to emerge out of the city of uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, the sightings and encounters soon extended into Chicagoland area and nearby states. And this was an unprecedented series of events, especially for an urban and residential region. Um, the wing humanoid was first dubbed the Chicago Phantom. That's what I first called it when we started getting the reports. But of course the media and the uh, internet eventually preferred to use the moniker Chicago Mothman. So we were getting all these references to the actual Mothman of Point Pleasant. So uh, tonight I'm gonna discuss some of the early incidents uh, that were reported to the original task force, which you know, throughout 2017 how the, you know, the nexus and how it evolved over the year. And believe me, 2017 was a bear. It was crazy. I um, mean, you can ask Tobias and, and Manuel as well. Um, we were getting sightings left and right. Uh, so that original task force did evolve into the uh, FAMS and Monsters 14 research team. So starting off, in the early spring of 2017, there were a number of reports coming up on the um, MUFON uh, CMS, uh, which was the uh, the management system where they used to collect, collect reports. And uh, we started noticing some of these reports and it's, it started getting more interested. We had originally uh, looked in, tried to look into the 2011 sightings. There were three of them in South Chicago. But of course, MUFON at the time had all the information, so we couldn't directly uh, contact the witnesses. But the uh, in two, starting in 2017, when the, the first sighting was reported, and that sighting was at Oz Park in North Chicago. And uh, those first five or six reports came up on MUFON. So when that started to occur, I started reporting them on the blog. And Manuel and I were kind of doing it together at the time. Uh, Tobias hadn't joined us yet. But uh, 
however he did it, <laughs> Manuel got a hold of the first witness, which was a um, a lawyer, a female lawyer who had the encounter in Nas Park. So that's kind of where it started from. And after that, we started get the report started coming in the MUFON from various locations throughout the city. Now, that eventually led up to about a dozen sightings. Now, some of those sightings were sent to us after people started realizing we were looking into the phenomena. And, you know, after the search engine, after Google started indexing some of the reports, when people would have an encounter, they would search for wing being, wing humanoid in Chicago, or something to that effect. And it would come up on Google, and our contact information would be there. So instead of contacting MUFON, they started contacting us. So uh, we had about, a, there were about a dozen reports up until the time when we got a report uh, out of uh, Logan Square. Now, that report was pretty detailed. And that is kind of when the, the media started really picking up on a lot of this. The, uh, for those people who know Vice uh, investigations, they do, they have a website, Vice, and they used to have a TV show as well when they used to report things. Well, one of the reporters went out and interviewed the individual at the Logan Square location. So I'm going to go ahead and read that report. But after that, after they did, after they did that piece and, and released it, then this whole Chicago Mothman thing really took off. So this is the report at Logan Square that kind of, you know, kind of set everything into motion. So I did receive an email from the, a witness, and um, and I'm going to keep all this confidential as I can. Uh, who stated that they wished to talk to me about a sighting they had on Friday, June 30th, 2017 at approximately 10.30 p.m. Now, the witness worked at security at a bar named The Owl, which was located at the 2500 block of North Milwaukee Avenue in Logan Square. Now, the witness stated that he was outside the location leaning against the wall while smoking a cigarette. He said it was alone at the time, except a few other people walking along the street. He noticed a large bat-like creature flying above the street lights, which were approximately 60 to 70 feet away, which was over a lot across the street. Uh, as the witness focused on the flying anomaly, he noticed that it was actually a bat-like humanoid. The body was five to five and a half foot in length and grayish in color. Uh, it was well illuminated by the street lights. The head was human-like, but was much thinner and had a pointed crest extending from its back, the back of its head, similar to like a pterosaur, but shorter. Now, these, this ray that came off the back of the head on this particular sighting, we, we occasionally had received that description later on. Now, the head was turned away from the witness, so he could not see the, the eyes or the face. Now, the body tapered towards the back, and it looked like there were short legs or appendages tucked underneath it, followed by a short, rounded extension or tail. Now, the wings had the full span of approximately 8 to 10 foot and were attached along the body. The wings were bat-like membranes, but uh, heavy like that of a pterosaur. Now, the witness noticed that the being flapped its wing to gain speed and height, then would glide. There was no sound. It was moving swiftly above the street lights across North Milwaukee Avenue, then burst upwards into the clouds. Now, the witness was not sure if there were other witnesses since the being flew so quickly. Now, the witness said that at the time his phone was inside the bar charging, and that he was very upset he didn't have it because he would have had time to get a possible photograph. He said that he didn't feel any fear or foreboding, only that he was startled at what he witnessed. 
Now, the witness was very convinced he forthright and didn't embellish during the account, which is something I have said before. Uh, these witnesses, for the most part, did not embellish on what they originally told us. Uh, so that that sighting kind of led to the vice. It did it led to the vice article that went viral. I mean, it, it sparked interest in the phenomena right away as soon as it was published. That day it was published, which was about a month after the incident. It was crazy after that because then the sightings really started coming in. Um, the only thing I feared at the time was we were going to get a lot of copycats. But it didn't turn out like that. People were sincerely, you could tell they saw something. And um, they were putting out a, a few details that just hadn't been dis, you know, disclosed yet about these flying beings. So not long after that, well, in fact, the day before that, the sighting at the Owl Bar, uh, Chicago police officers reported seeing this being in the Autumn Auburn Gresham neighborhood. Now, this was sent to Manuel Navarrete over at UFO Clearinghouse. And then by this time, you know, Manuel and I were working on these cases together. So uh, this police officer who contacted Manuel, he did write it out, what had happened, and sent it to Manuel, and Manuel sent it to me. And this is what he states. I'm going to tell you about something that happened to me on the night of June 29th, 2017 in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm reporting this on my own volition, and I'm wanting to stay anonymous due to the fact that I work for the Chicago Police Department. And I do not want anyone else to know that I submitted this report. I had been with the Chicago Police Department for over eight and a half years. The only people who know that I submitted this are my wife, my son, who encouraged me to submit this, and my partner, who had also who was also a witness to the incident. I want you to know that I'm of sound mind and health and don't want any publicity other than just reporting this incident. I also want you to know that I'm not prone to fits of fantasy or hoaxing anything that I see uh, especially while I'm on duty. So on the night of 29, 2017, approximately 11.15 p.m., my partner and I were on routine, excuse me, on routine patrol and approaching the intersection of West 81st and South Throop in the Auburn to Gresham neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. Now, we were flagged down by a group of people who were pointing up to the top of an apartment building that was on the corner. We pulled over and they immediately started telling us to look up at the building. Many of the people were very frightened and were very excited about seeing what they had seen. My partner and I look and see a large creature that was approximately six to six and a half feet tall and very thin. If it had been a human, it would have been, you would have said it would have been emaciated. This thing was standing on top of the building and had what looked like a pair of very large wings that extended out at least eight to 10 foot from tip to tip. No discernible features. It just looked like a dark black shadow with wings. Now, my partner and I both thought that it was someone trying to jump in the building and maybe wearing a costume of some type. Then we both shined our flashlights to get a better look at what we were dealing with. And this thing took off into the air and flew away. As the creature flew away, heading in a southerly direction, something sounding like a scream came from it. And within minutes of about, within a matter of about five seconds, this creature was gone into the night. Now, the people who initially flagged us down had said that many people in the neighborhood had seen this thing for the previous two nights. And this just happened to be the only time that it was seen in a stationary place. <clears throat> now, we stood there stunned at this thing as this thing flew away and disappeared into the night. Uh, we stood there and talked to the group of people who flagged us down, taking information down and any information regarding previous sightings from the nights before. Now, we initially were doubtful about filing a report because we thought it would be we'd be made fun of for seeing little green men. 
We finally filed a report as we did not want to violate protocol. Nothing was ever said about the report being filed. And as of right now, it's been business as usual. Now, we wanted to file this report because after I told my son the story, he went online and showed me that this was not the only sighting of something similar being seen in the city. I showed my partner the day after the sighting. He said that he didn't want to be involved. And, and as far as he was concerned, it was nothing more than a large owl or big bird that was misidentified. My son was the one who encouraged me to file this and, did it, and do it anonymously to protect my identity. <clears throat> now, I know what I saw was real. And even though I have no explanation as to what it truly is, I know that there that what I saw was flesh and blood. I am a Christian man who believes that there are things that come from other planes and stalk people of this earth, and that only one's faith is what protects us from these things. I know that my faith is strong, and therefore I'm protected, and I hope that I never see this thing again. Thank you very much for your time, and have a plus day. So this was a pretty remarkable account. Uh, but the best thing was that this is supposedly a police report in the system. So what we did, I, I filed, I immediately filed a FOIA request to the city of Chicago. And uh, I think Manuel and, and Tobias did as well. So, um, We, we did get a response pretty quickly, as a matter of fact. But, of course, the response is which, what we figured was there was no report file. So, uh, you know, that was disappointing. So I was kind of, you know, we were kind of bummed up by that, hoping that we'd get something. But, you know, as we went further and further along with this, with these reports and these sightings, uh, we found out pretty quickly that the city and the powers that be weren't going to be cooperative at all. So about a, uh, about a month later in July 26, 2017, I received this next account. And this information came from a witness who was in the crowd when the police saw this thing. It was one of the people that, that flagged them down. So um, they, they wrote, Mr. Strickler, I hesitated to send this in for two reasons. First, I'm not 100% sure that I believe it myself. And second, I'm trying to be a journalist and don't want this type of report to discredit me for future career opportunities. That's why I'm sending this anonymously. And that's why I'm not interested in following up about any of this. I was talking about this story while drinking with my siblings the other night. And my sister pointed out that it reminded her of some stories that she'd seen for, uh, circulating uh, online. And when I looked into it myself, I was surprised to see that my story had already been partially reported earlier this month. On June 29th, I was walking home from getting Wendy's when a small group of friends uh, with a small group of friends when one of my friends pointed at the dark shape in a tree on a corner of West 81st and South Route. The thing was big, but details were hard to make out at night. Then this thing jumped out of the tree and flew onto the roof in an apartment building on the same block. When it flew, I got the chance to see that it was tall, dark thing with wide wings. Nothing like that Mothman statue that they've got in Point Pleasant. A group of people had started to form on the corner with my friends and I. Then some of the people on the corner whom I had met previously flagged down a, a police officer to point the thing out. That's when my friends and I quietly slipped away. So uh, I, I, I now believe that the officer I saw was the same officer who reported a story about seeing this thing that same night. I still think it might have had a logical explanation, but I thought there might be others interested in hearing this story and coming to their own conclusions. Thank you. So 
<laughs> that that I, I was glad we got some verification from another witness. Unfortunately, we didn't get any nobody else from the neighborhood or who was there that night followed up on it. But I from some other information, confidential information that was given to me by this witness, I um I, I believe they were definitely there and they saw this thing. So a little bit later, now we're talking about 2017. We're talking about citing reports leading up, you know, going forward into these cases. Uh, so I did, re about a month later, I received uh, the following information by telephone. This was, um, this was on Thursday, early in the morning, Thursday. Uh, August the 3rd. So this is this is what the individual told me. The encounter took place in the playground area of Indian Boundary Park in Bolingbrook, Illinois, southwest suburb of Chicago. And this is one of the first sightings that we received outside of the city. Now, the witness states that she had a normal routine of walking in the park at night. On Wednesday, August 2nd, that same night, but it was before midnight, on 2017 at approximately 10.30 p.m. local time, the witness, who wished to remain anonymous in the report since she resides in a pretty tight-knit community, was in the playground area of the park when she came upon a 7- to 8-foot-tall bean standing in the middle of a pathway. Now, the witness initially thought that this was two people embracing, but was surprised at the height. She also noticed a sucking and slobbering sound coming from the bean. She felt like she was being drawn to this being, as well as feeling a sense of foreboding. Now, the witness grabbed her cell phone in order to catch a photo, capture a photo but was shocked when the beings slowly turned towards her. Overcome with fear, she quickly realized this was not two people embracing, but a single, tall, dark humanoid. The witness got the feeling that it somehow knew that she was going to take a photo, then reacted. She mentioned that she felt like she was being lured towards the humanoid. Now, the being had exceptional broad shoulders and looked like it was wearing a thick black unknown material. Now the head was human-like, but quite small in size. She was within 15 feet of the being, but never noticed any eyes or facial expressions or features. There was enough moonlight available so she was able to get an excellent look at this being. Now, she immediately took another pathway in order to get away from this being, but soon started to experience intense weakness and fear. She actually had to sit and gather herself while keeping an eye out for the being. Eventually, she got to her feet and quickly followed another path home. Now, when this witness arrived at her home, which was like about two blocks away, she relayed the experience to her son, who recommended that they drive back to the park and see if the being was still there. As they approached, they drove around the location. Then the sun noticed a large dark shadow emerged from and stood emerged from and stood up at a nearby bush. He stated that it peered at him, though he didn't see any face or eyes or face. He just knew that it was watching him and that he was overcome with intense apprehension. They quickly headed home. Now, when they arrived at home. They were both very scared and upset, not knowing what to do. Should they report the incident to the local authorities or remain quiet? Eventually, they went online and found my contact information. Now, when I talked to the witness, she was shocked at the number of sightings in the Chicago metro area. She had no knowledge of any previous incidents. It was quite obvious that she was still very scared and was afraid of that being may know where she lives. I mean, she was literally crying when I was on the phone with her. Now, I asked the witness to keep in contact if with, with me in case she had another experience or hearing any other sightings or that she remembered for their details. Now, this park is a large complex near a school in a subdivision 
along Springwood Lane in Bolingbroke. I asked the witness if uh, the covering may have been membrane-like wings wrapped around the body, in which she acknowledged in the affirmative. Uh, I have talked to several witnesses by telephone during that wave of sightings, but uh, it's pretty obvious that she was terrified by what she experienced. So <laughs> this next sighting uh, was of a red eyed winged goblin that confronted a Chicago little village family. Now this one was sent to Manuel as well over a UFO clearinghouse. Um, the date was September 24th, 2017 at about 8.45 p.m. in the 2600 block of South Drake Avenue. The witnesses were a mother and two adult children. Uh, uh, she states, we were walking home from Sunday evening mass and we're walking our usual route up Drake Avenue to our house. Now, as we walked, we noticed what looked like a very tall man dressed in black standing out in the middle of the road underneath a street light. We didn't pay much attention as we assumed that it was just a regular person in the road and wearing black clothing. The man then stretched his arms out above his head and suddenly a pair of very large wings spread out from behind him, which must have been over 10 foot wide and were solid black. Even though this man was standing under a street light, there was still a lot, a lot of detail. There was not a lot of detail to this man. As we moved closer, we noticed that the man turned and walked more like hopped towards the sidewalk ahead of us. It was then that it turned towards us and we saw that it had a pair of glowing red eyes. Now, the mother uttered the words Madre de Deus and crossed herself and then said to us that it looked like a duende, which is Spanish word for a goblin. We stopped and stood in front of my mom trying to shield her. The man then made a loud screech and then it opened its wings and shot straight up into the air. We could hear the sound of the wings flapping as it rose up into the air and passed over us and out of sight as it continued flying down the street and out of sight. Now, my mother was visibly shaken and was praying. When I turned back to her, she reassured, we reassured her that it was over and the thing was gone. Now, I asked my brother to help me walk her to the, the rest of the way home. And when we got home, my brother said that my mother told him that she could feel a strong sense of evil coming from this thing. She was certain that this thing was sent to do harm to someone that it felt sorry for, and she felt sorry for whoever it was sent after. I'm certain that whatever it was that we, and I am certain whatever it was that we saw, it was not a bird, but something from outside of this world. So Manuel made some notes. Uh, he talked to the eldest brother, uh, the one making the report and state, he stated that he heard from others about the sightings and that he reported to UFO Clearinghouse because actually Manuel had started putting flyers up in, in the little village area. And he had seen one of Manuel's flyers in the local grocery store. Uh, Manuel said, I spoke on two occasions with him and then once to the younger brother regarding the sighting. The third witness was unwilling to speak to me in regard to her sighting, but did provide details via her elder son. Now, both siblings were able to recall their sighting in detail, and both had similar descriptions when interviewed separately. Now, neither the witness embellished upon their sighting, and neither witness contradicted the other's testimony. Uh, when I asked if either one would accompany me back to the spot of the sighting, I was told that they would accompany me, but would only do during the daylight hours and absolutely not during after it turned dark. It's apparent that both witnesses were very shaken and that they believed that what they saw was real. Uh, he said, it's my opinion that this sighting is valid and that the witnesses are credible and this sighting warrants further investigation. Um, and the proximity of the sighting to other reported sightings also warrants further investigation and follow up with, with other witnesses. Now. This being a little village, 
Now, let me talk about Little Village real quick. This area of Chicago, this neighborhood of Chicago, is mostly Hispanic. Um, to this date, this current date, we've had eight sightings reported out of Little Village. And another aspect of this phenomena, and it just doesn't pertain to Little Village, but it pertains to all the sightings that we have received uh, in Chicago and outside of Chicago, over 50% of the sightings that we have received were from people, from witnesses of Hispanic or Latino descent. Now, is it because of culture? Is it because of religion? Is it because of something else? We just haven't quite figured that out yet. But it, it's very interesting. Uh, later on, I start going in, into other uh, sightings from other years and as we progress, and we'll be doing that in, in, you know, in other shows, you'll notice that a lot of this comes from um, Little Village. Um, so, I, you know, we, we really don't know why this is happening to these folks, but, uh, you know, th th it's just another aspect of this whole phenomena that just really, just really sets it apart from much any other type of phenomena. Uh, and another reason why I, I think it's interesting because we have heard people talk about people in crowds actually who have seen this phenomenon, seen these beings, and it seems that some people seem to be pegged or uh, allowed to see it. So um, you know, this is just another part of this whole investigation we're look, been looking into. So I have one more uh, one more account from 2017. I'm going to talk about. And uh, if you have questions, you can start posting them now. I'll come back and get them. <clears throat> this is probably the most dramatic of the sightings. So I received a brief email on uh, Thursday, uh, August 10th at uh, 3.45 p.m. my time from a witness in Chicago. I was asked to call them for further information. So I responded with a telephone call at about four o'clock the next day. Now, the witness, AG, and her husband, who live in the Washington, D.C. suburbs, are in Chicago visiting her parents, who live at 1400 Lakeshore Drive. Now, she was born and raised abroad, but her parents are now living in Chicago. Now, last night, which was Wednesday, uh, August 9th, 2017, at approximately 9.20 p.m. Central Time, the witness and her husband were returning to her parents' residence after taking a brief walk along North Lakeshore Drive, walking south. As they approached East, East Shore Street, they noticed something large and dark flying towards them from the left, from the direction of Lake Michigan. Both witnesses were startled as the flying anomaly crossed ahead of them at an altitude of 20 or so feet. Now they watched the anomaly sweep upwards over the trees in front of the 1400, in front of 1400 North Lakeshore Drive, which is the condominium building where her mother and father live at then stop in midair after it reached a height of just a few stories from the top of the building. It hovered with a large pair of wings for approximately five seconds as it seemed to focus on the windows in front of it. It then bent backwards and fell on a dive towards the trees. The witnesses hurriedly walked in the direction of the intersection, then turned right on the East Shiller Street, quickly walking towards the entrance of the condominium building. Then suddenly, the large winged being slowly descended in front of them, not more than 25 foot away. It hovered about five feet above the sidewalk with its wings spread open as it peered at the couple with large, bright red eyes 
that slowly altered back and forth in intensity. Several people on the other side of the street, including a delivery van driver, reacted with screams and frightening yelps. The wing being hovered for 10 seconds, then quickly pulled the wings into its body and shot up quickly into the night sky. There was no sound other than a rush of air as it, if the being flew upwards. Now, the witness, A.G., described the wing being as human-like with a small head that narrowed at the top. It had legs like a human with long feet that tapered. Neither witness noticed any arms. The body was five to six foot in height. It had a wide and had wide wings that resembled the top wings of a butterfly attached along the body. Now the illumination from the building entrance could be seen through the wings, so it looked to be made of a skin or membrane. The wingspan was easily 10 foot 10 plus feet. The legs pulsated as it hovered in the air. The overall color was very dark, like a deep bluish green. The skin on the body may have been moist since it was shiny. The eyes were large compared to the head size, slightly slanted and alternating back and forth in brightness. It made no noise other than a slight humming from the pulsating legs. Both witnesses stating that they felt a vibration that emanated from the beam. Now, the witness did see at least one camera flash come from across the street. Now, neither witness was able to retrieve their phones. The fear and shock was too profound during the encounter. A.G. stated that she literally fell to her knees after the incident and that her husband had to assist her the rest of the way. Neither witness has slept more than an hour or two since the encounter 18 hours previous. Now, the witness statement by telephone was quite dramatic and detailed. I'll admit, it kind of freaked me out a bit. This encounter uh, to date offers the best description of these flying humanoids. Uh, the witness husband talked briefly, but he acted like he'd rather not say too much. Now, the witnesses were supposed to fly home but they delayed, delayed their departure for a few days. Now, AG told me, I'm just not ready to get on an airplane right now. Now, an, another aspect of this sighting, and this is something that has kind of cropped up in a few of the sightings. This AG's husband is a professional athlete, was a professional athlete in the Washington, D.C. area. He played for a professional sports team. We have had other local celebrities have sightings as well. People that are known to the public, a few others that are known beyond just the uh, local public, which I find fascinating. So, you know, that was probably the most dramatic sighting that we received <clears throat> that year. And maybe one of the most dramatic received all along. Though, as we go into... Uh, other shows and I start chronologically talking about these encounters, uh, I believe some of the, um, the O'Hare settings are, are just as, just as interesting. So I, if you've got questions, uh, feel free to bring them up there. I'll try to go back here and get as many as I can. If I miss one, feel free to go ahead and post it again. Okay, you're just going to have to wait a second until I get to the first one. I had like 300. Okay, Mortal Clown. Have any of these sightings overlapped with uh, UAP or UFO sightings? No, other than one. Uh, and I believe that other that it was out in Montrose, off of Montrose Beach. People were out on a boat, and they saw two of these beings flying above them. But about the same time, they saw something green streaking across the horizon. I believe that to have been a meteorite, to be quite honest with you. Um, and the reason I say that is there, I found at least one more, one other meteorite sighting that same night uh, in Chicago. So it was probably brief and very quick. 
Uh, as far as other sightings of craft, I don't know of any, which is another thing. You know, um, the UFO, UFO reports, which are usually pretty prevalent in the Chicago area, that first summer and into fall of 2017, the sighting, the numbers of UFO sightings, UAP sightings, really dropped tremendously. Now, I don't know if it had anything to do with what people, you know, with these sightings or not. Uh, you know, that's one thing I, I, I will probably look into as we look further and further into this, as we start looking at years as to how heavy the UFO activity and other unexplained activity was in the Chicago area or areas where these sightings were seen. Because, you know, if you look at the, uh, the map, the interactive map, we're about 160 sightings at this point right now. And uh, or sightings we believe are valid sightings. And they range anywhere, they, you know, from Milwaukee south in Chicago down into central Illinois and central Indiana, out into uh, southwest Wisconsin. So, you know, we are taking sightings about 250 mile radius from Chicago. Uh, but we haven't really looked into the UFO activity reported around the same time of these sightings. But I do know the sighting, you know, for Chicago, the, the UFO activity had really decreased. Tina Johnson. In your opinion, is Mothman spiritual or physical, and is that physicality temporary? You know, I, I believe they are a flesh and blood. I don't think they're spiritual. I don't think they're any type of apparition. I believe they're flesh and blood. I do also believe that as time has gone on, that they are interdimensional. But, you know, you folks have heard me talk about it you know, interdimensional species with cryptids and other things as well. Um, I think there's something to that. Uh, but I think these be I don't think these beings are here on this earth plane all the time. I think they move within, within uh, these dimensions. But no, I don't think it's, I don't think it's spiritual. I think it's definitely uh, just by, just by the way, the sounds and what people have seen and the way they react. I think they are physical beings. Bernadette, are there still sightings or activity at the airport? Do you think this is their main hub? Yeah, I do. Uh, starting in October 2019, and we'll get to that as we as I start moving along with these these reports. Uh, about eighty percent of the sightings have been coming out of the Chicago O'Hare area. Um, in the road, also in Rosemont, which is east of uh, suburb east of the airport, and, and Bensonville, which is uh, southwest of the airport. But there have been other areas nearby as well. Do I think uh, the, the airport is the main hub? Yeah, I do. I think it has something to do with uh, that cemetery, the Rest Haven Cemetery, which is in the southwest part of the airport. Uh, it's an area where a lot of carriers and, and uh, are located, uh, cargo carriers. And there have been a particularly large number of sightings there by people who work for the carriers. Uh, security has been increased there over the years. And uh, that seems to be the area where they do seem to be emanating from. Is Now, is it? Is it a portal opening in the uh, in the cemetery? I don't know. You know, we've had sightings throughout the airport, but I think I think there's a good possibility that this is where the starting point, the the portal, if you want to call it that, the entry area is. Tina Johnson is Mothman mainly a flapper or a glider? Well. These sightings in and around Chicago, 
it, it's pretty remarkable the way this thing maneuvers in the air. There are times when people do see it flap its wings, but for the most part, it's able to locomote itself without the wings flapping. It speed up, slow down, maneuver. It's 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 bizarre. Um, you know, when people see it, they're amazed by it because they, you know it it just looks like something that has some type of um, supernatural volition ability. Um, this, that, see, this is something that when I had my encounter in 1988 of a winged humanoid, it did the same thing. And in my encounter in 88 here in Pennsylvania, the description that people have been giving us is very similar to what I reported back then. So uh, I, I think they do have a supernatural ability to uh, to glide and to move and to increase, decrease speed, hover. Uh, Tina, again, do you think the government is aware of Mothman? Well, I don't know. I, 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 you know, that's a hard question to answer. You know, we, we've been we have talked about Bigfoot uh, and government involvement, which I think there is some. As far as Mothman goes, I don't know. I haven't seen any real proof that there is, but there does seem. Now, if you're talking federal government, maybe not, but I think the local government in our in Chicago and the powers that be at the airport are pretty concerned about this thing. Um, they had tried to squash this from the very beginning. Jose Sanchez, has there ever been multiple Mothman sightings in any recent or past sightings? Yeah, there was one. Uh, like I said, the Montrose Beach, there were two sightings of two beings. There was another sighting, too. Well, there were several sightings, actually, when these beings are seen at the same time in different parts of the city. Now... That's why, you know, that's why I say that there are definitely more than one being. There, there are just some small differences in some of the settings and time periods where it, it, you, you almost got to come off thinking that there are definitely more than one of them out there. And I've thought from the very beginning that there was at least three at the time and many more coming in and out now. Thomas Carroll. Have there been any sightings in, in Michigan side of the lake? Yeah, we've had a few. Uh, I, I know of two. I think um, Tobias got a couple of reports from there. Uh, they're not marked on the map, but they are in our, our notes. There haven't been any, uh, there haven't been any real distinguishable aspects to those Michigan sightings that kind of set it apart from the Chicago sightings. And most of those have been very brief. 24 baby bull is the 9-11 Mothman photo legit. I don't know. You know, you know, I don't know. I, I don't honestly, in my opinion, I don't believe it is, but you know, who am I to determine, you know, I, I, haven't looked at that photo as far as forensically. Some people claim it is, you know, we, we've had a lot of people in the past state after the fact that they have seen these flying beings uh, previous to an incident. But as far as, and I, I know which, which photo you're talking about. I, I just don't really know. Now I do I do know one thing. Speaking of photos, we're working on a report right now, or Manuel is, with photos. So as soon as he gets that, I'm going to post those, and um, we'll talk about that at a later time. But yeah, that it's an interesting report. So we'll see we'll see what happens. But um, we are actually working on three of them right now. One that I got, two that Manuel got, and Tobias is working on one of those from uh, 
from Manuel up in Wisconsin. So that's where we are right now. Uh, let's see. Jose Sanchez said, Mothman and UFOs ever been witnessed simultaneously as Bigfoot have been? No. Not that I know of. Now, you know, in other reports of other areas, possibly, but I don't, I personally don't know of any. Are they seen eating? Tina Johnson asked. One instance of a report that I received from uh, Northern Indiana, outside of Hammond, Indiana, was from an individual who saw one standing in a swampy area that seemed to be grabbing fish. I don't know. They they did they, they, they said they'd never really seen it eat anything, but it seemed like it was fishing for you know for fish. But as far as um, small pets, small birds or animals being killed or or being partaked for food, I we just don't have any information about that. Um, and we have looked into that. If there have been a an inordinate amount of pets and such missing in the city of Chicago, and we haven't seen anything stand out. Tabra 69, I once heard a story that Mothman may have been someone wearing a suit, exotech, and whatnot. You know, I hear a lot of stories about that, but I haven't really seen anything. You know, so there have been people who have said that they believe what's going on in Chicago may actually be that, but I haven't seen any evidence of that. The way these things fly and maneuver around, it's just not something that a human could do in a suit. And, and, and another thing, you know, we, we, were, we were getting sightings of these things flying around the river downtown before it empties into the, the lake. And there's several bridges there. And these things were seen dropping, you know, from the sky down towards the river and maneuvering under the bridges and over and over. A human in a squirrel suit ain't going to do that. Or even any type of exo you know, uniform or suit or anything like that. So there's just no evidence of that. Tina Johnson, uh, were there people who put themselves in telepathic communication with Mothman? Uh, we have had some cursory contact through the group, through the team. And when I get there to that point, I will talk about that. That's later on. That actually started in 2021. Uh, we really haven't had much interaction with them since then. So I don't know what the reason is behind that, but who knows? We may actually get some. Uh, Andrew Bull, Lon, do you remember the delivery driver who hit the gargoyle? Sean Forker did the report on Memphis. Yeah, that was, um, there was actually two of them. Uh, one up in Ohio, Northern Ohio, and one down in Pasco County, Florida. Uh, but they, there were none like that in Chicago. Okay, folks. Well, you know, thanks for coming on here and um, asking questions. I hope I gave you the answers you wanted to hear or help you understand what, what's been going on, especially in this first year. So, again, if you have an unexplained encounter or sighting, feel free to contact me through the Phantoms and Monsters blog site. And, look, I thank each and every one of you coming on here and um, making this all possible. So please, please like, sh uh, subscribe, and share. So... Uh, until we meet again next Friday, just stay healthy and have a safe, enjoyable weekend. Good night.